In this video, we're gonna cover everything you need to know about LinkedIn ads conversion tracking. We'll be looking at the classic online conversion tracking using cookies and third-party data. We'll then look into how you can create offline conversions using your CRM data, using LinkedIn's new and improved conversion API. And don't worry, it's not actually as complicated as that sounds. Finally, we'll be looking at LinkedIn ads new data-driven attribution, which is their new attribution model that goes way beyond just that closed loop last click attribution. So uh, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so let's start at the very beginning with online conversion tracking. And this is where 90% of people will start with their conversion tracking journey across any platform this is ultimately where you're looking to use third-party data and cookies to be able to track people's conversions um, from your ads through your website or landing pages but ultimately once we've done this online conversion tracking we'll go to the offline conversion tracking at a campaign level and then offline conversion tracking through that data attribution model uh, which we mentioned uh, to sort of show you a more holistic view of tracking as well and we'll, we'll take you on that linkedin ads conversion journey starting from the most basic to the most advanced as we go through it if you're in a new account or whether you're just looking to set up, uh, set up your conversions for the first time or whether you're looking to check your conversions click on measurement and go on conversion tracking you can then either see your conversions in here already, or if you haven't got any, click on create conversions. We can click on insight tag conversion. The conversion API um, is gonna be the offline conversions we look at in a bit. So we click on um, the insight tag conversion. We haven't got our uh, insight tag set up yet, but it prompts you to do that on the next step, which we'll get onto. So if I just put in tests and click on then, I'm not gonna click on qualified lead because ultimately it's not qualified yet because it hasn't had that human element of checking to make sure that it fits in with our target persona so that's something that will come primarily with offline conversion tracking but we'll get onto that in a little bit as well so click on just lead for now um, and then we can ultimately if you have a set value for products or like a, a i guess like a median value you can put it in there uh, typically i don't necessarily look at doing that because you can do that from offline conversion data next i don't want to go on to the windows you should choose but the default windows are 30 days conversion tracking from a cookie once you've clicked on it or seven days from a view through conversion as well um you can set that to how you like um and i'm not going to kind of get into the attribution argument right now because it's a pretty tasty one in the b2b world um but there's other videos i've done around that as well as whether you should use each uh, campaign which would ultimately mean anyone every campaign that has been served an impression up until the point they've converted which they've been able to track through uh, the browser um, cookie um, it will attribute a conversion to each of them last touch would be just the most recent campaign that someone's seen which would then be allocated a hundred percent of um, of the conversion value so let's yeah let's just leave it as default for now we go on the next step so now there's three different ways we can set up our conversions. Now, the first one would be website actions. If you've already got your insight tag installed, you'll be able to go, on, let me go into a different test account. This is a test account with some data in it at the moment. If you've already got it installed, you'll be able to see the button clicks and the pages which are already being pulled through. LinkedIn has actually made an acquisition into a company which collected this data, which they've now integrated into their offering, which is quite cool. And once you've got the insight tag set up, you can go through, I wouldn't necessarily use button clicks as a goal because um, if it's an Ajax form, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's gone through and submitted properly and you might get double uh, conversions or it may not have actually gone through. So you're counting a conversion even though you haven't captured the data, yada, yada. I've done a whole video on Ajax form tracking form GA4, which I'll link to below if you wanna go and see how properly you can set that up. But um, I would just recommend doing pages. So thank you pages. If someone has filled out a form they then have uh, been redirected to a thank you page. I'd go on this thank you page and you can then create a new website action as a conversion. But at this point, I'm probably guessing that you guys haven't installed the insight tag and there's two different ways you can do it. One way is you can go and install the tag as like your JS or your JavaScript snippet and you can see the tag here. So you can do it to yourself or send to your developer. Two ways of doing this, what it says here, you should go and put it within your footer. I typically put it within my header because it's got asynchronous loading within Google Tag Manager, but never mind too much about that. But ultimately you can go into your WordPress theme, for example, go into the global theme settings, uh, put it into your um, global header or footer settings, and then just insnip, uh, insert this snippet within there. Sometimes it's not the best way of doing it because if you aren't using a child theme, for example, with WordPress, it could overwrite it with your next PHP update. And, you know, it's just slightly more confusing if you're not that um, technical. So what I'd recommend is having your Google Tag Manager set up. 
if you need a video to show you how to set up Google Tag Manager, sorry if my eyes are watering, it's because I've just sneezed about 15 times. Whoa, I think I'm allergic to this mic. Um, we, um, yeah, if you need a video around how to set up Tag Manager, the alt we have a few on the channel as well. So go through and make sure you set that up because um, you can go onto the channel. You can either, you can copy this, you can um, go and create a tag and go on a uh, new tag. You can click on, just name this, whatever you want. We call it like LinkedIn Insight Tag. You can then go and do custom HTML and then you can whack that in there. I mean, you can do triggering all pages, but there's also an easier way of doing it because this is a complete LinkedIn ads conversion guide. You can also go into Tag Manager much simply, go on Tag Manager, oh my bad, um, and just copy and paste this tag. Um, and if you go into do, 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 discard changes, go on to tags, new tag, you can then go on to LinkedIn insight tag and then you can just copy and paste it there and then trigger all pages so that then will start appearing on your website which will then allow you to go through and you know take the events which are automatically pulling through and create them as conversion actions um the other way you can go through and create a conversion action um would be to go on to once you've done that you could do a page load very similar to the website actions here we just mentioned, but this is the, I guess, legacy way of doing it where you can say page load. I want any page that starts with um, or contains or is exactly equal to. Um, and then you can put your URL here of your thank you page or what it starts with. Um, it doesn't it doesn't actually um, register query strings. It just have to be the actual file name after the URL. So um, and you can create, you know, and or rules as well. So. You can do that if you want to get a bit more advanced and just want to again do ajax form tracking we have a much more in detailed way of doing this on our site but what you can do is create event specific goals so copy and place uh, paste this snippet down here <clears throat> once you have your insight tag code installed and then you have to go onto your google tag manager again create a tag um call it whatever you want um, go on to custom HTML, add a little. This needs to be installed on the page where as soon as the action is taken, this will then be triggered um, alongside your insight tag to then say as soon as some, uh, things happen specifically on that page, this will then trigger that event, which then push it back into um, LinkedIn ads. Again, I across the board would just recommend doing destination page um, URL conversion tracking. It's better UX, it's uh, more consistent tracking and it's just easier to set up. But this is ultimately, you know, you can, there's gonna be many different ways of doing it and it's primarily gonna be from Ajax forms. So with HubSpot, you can either do like, you know, put an event from HubSpot right into your GA4 and use that as like the trigger here for then to actually um, blast this snippet or get this snippet to be triggered. Um, but just save yourself a headache set up the insight tag and then use um, what probably would be best would be the uh, website actions um, or the manual setup. Just go through and do a page load. Just do that, save yourself all that aggravation. Um, next step, you can go through and see the top level details, the name, lead, um, attribution model, source, how you've done it, um, and then any campaigns. And you can go through and actually add it to all the campaigns <clears throat> that you wanna go and add it to um, from this perspective. So you create a new, um, that's quite cool. Rather than going individually into the campaigns, you can actually go through and select all the campaigns that you want your conversion to be associated with, which is a really nice time-saving activity. Okay, so that's online conversion tracking. I'm not going to go into sort of like um, the troubleshooting here because I've done loads of videos on Google Tag Manager and doing it. But if you want to go on to preview, um, it will then bring up your website and the and you can go on your site and click around and see if the tags are then being triggered in the preview as well. But we've got so many videos on Tag Manager, I'm not gonna go too much into that today. So next we're gonna go into offline conversion tracking and compared to online conversion tracking where they take a cookie browser and then when that browser fills out a form, it then triggers that back into LinkedIn saying, okay, this action's been completed. 
Offline conversion tracking takes a slightly different route and it takes all the details from your CRM or where your data has been hosted, whether that's on an Excel spreadsheet or whether that's on you know, an SQL database and re-uploads that back in um, to LinkedIn ads platform. This can be matched from like the, the LinkedIn um, associated number that they have with from that ad click or whether it's gonna be things like hash data, like email addresses or phone numbers, whatever it may be, or any other bits of information they can do to be able to pair uh, these two together. But what LinkedIn have done from a while ago is HubSpot have actually been able to be integrated with LinkedIn. So it pulls through all that ad data so you can see and it's categorized within LinkedIn um, in HubSpot itself. But what's actually happened now with the new conversion API is you're able to then re now take that data from HubSpot where you can see all the view and everything and re-upload it back into LinkedIn ads. Now the, the pros of that are you can be able to start seeing you know, um, offline conversion data, some like qualified lead, for example. So someone's actually been said, you know, that is a good lead. We want to count that. Um, also, you can kind of start seeing deal value. Those are the two pros. Um, and it kind of closes that loop to better see you in platform information. The negatives of it are you only have a 90 day window. So say, for example, a lead comes in and doesn't convert for 90 days because you know they've got to go through the pitching process they've got to go through like uh, i don't know the tender process they've got to then do like the evaluation they then got to get a contract signed and go through legal a lot of you know enterprise b2b deals don't happen in three months so they're not going to get that deal data and that close value and if someone then you know fills out um a form and then 91 days later it gets updated to worth a hundred thousand million pounds big deal it's not going to count that data in itself. So there are some limitations to this because of privacy concerns. So what we would kind of recommend is using offline conversion data and trying to find that middle ground, which probably would be that qualified lead. So if it comes into sales, someone in sales says, okay, we've seen this, they fit our ideal customer persona or profile. We want to then, okay, move them to a, like a new life cycle stage. And as soon as they get moved to a life cycle stage, which we care about, that will then trigger in LinkedIn saying, okay, that's a, that's a qualified lead. And that then helps us to start feed the AI machine of the conversion track and we start doing targeting later down the line. So I hope that kind of made sense. And there's a few ways you can do this. One is um, you can go, if you have a, um, a marketing subscription um, in HubSpot, you can go into the marketing um, and ads section and you can then go into events and then you can go into create and then event itself. That will then look something like this. Um, I'm gonna blur some of this information out. What the new conversion API from LinkedIn has done is been able to update the uh, lifecycle stages, which is the really cool bit we were talking about. So we can go add network LinkedIn, you can choose your ad account. You can then use the event trigger, so lifecycle stage. And then you can say when someone turns into um, when someone turns into a marketing sales opportunity, these are grayed out because we've already created um, events which include these three. So we've created events which, you know, each three of these different levers triggers into a different type of conversion. So we can see, I'll go on to later why that's so important. But we can see here if someone turns into a marketing qualified lead, sales qualified lead, or opportunity, they're all gonna get um, their own sort of conversion value which you can re-upload into the account. And the value here will be dynamically pulled through if there is a deal, but if not, you can set an associated value, which is your average order value, just like you could do with online conversions. And then next, once you create this, you click on next data sharing, click, you know, make sure they've opted in. And then what you wanna do is go in and um, you can then finalize that. And then what will be really cool about this integration from HubSpot is it then automatically pushes that directly into LinkedIn. So when you just select that, event based you can then select that offline conversion tracking campaign and associate it with all the campaigns that you want that's one thing as well which this online and offline conversion tracking have in common it's going to be attribution model based like very linear so it's going to be last touch or each touch it's not going to take the whole thing into account the other way you can do this offline conversion tracking um, would be to go back on here and go on to conversion tracking create conversion and conversion api the cool thing about the way I just showed you is you haven't got to go through this process, but if you do want to go through this process, you can then do, let's do uh, qualified lead because it's an offline conversion tracking. Let's do, um, keep it as the same as this. You can then say, we want to go and use HubSpot, but then you have to do it via Zapier. And what the Zapier would do would be literally taking the exact same process that we just went through 
in this, but then actually using it in the data. So I'll just put a screenshot up on page um, of how that would look. But ultimately it's just an adding a, I guess an API, but through Zapier versus using it through HubSpot, but really just depends on your level of HubSpot access. But there are ways around it if you just have the free or the very, very entry level version of HubSpot. But if you've only got the entry level of HubSpot, it probably means you haven't got loads and loads of leads and like, you know, a big, uh, I guess, uh, go to market motion really in play at the moment. So it may not be something you need to have set up at this point in time, but it's something you definitely can do. I'm gonna create a video on doing it through the HubSpot and Zapier. I just didn't wanna make this video, um, you know, an extra half an hour long. So feel free to go and subscribe on the link below and I can send emails out um, on that list if you just sign up to the general list um, around, you know, actually seeing how you can set this up in itself. So that brings us on to the final one. Now, this is the coolest, I guess, addition to the LinkedIn ads um, portfolio recently. And this is where they have this new insight tag and this new insight tag, again, there's no campaigns live in this, but I'll bring up a screenshot of one that we did an order of just yesterday, which is we're doing an audit of a LinkedIn ad account that came up. Um, once they connected through the same mechanisms, you can literally connect your through the conversion API of LinkedIn's conversion API, and it will then be able to read your uh, data within um, HubSpot or Salesforce or whatever you know CRM you guys use, whether you're doing it through Zapier or whether you're doing it through direct integration. Now, the cool thing about this is you, it's not just about last touch point or first touch point or each touch point attribution. It's their own data-driven model. It's not perfect yet. It needs some refinement and I think it needs some more customizability that we're able to do. But once you set you know your campaigns up, you can actually go and sync your data sources and add it in. So when you can go in here, you'll be able to see how many qualified leads, how many opportunities, how many closed one you've got, but from a holistic view. So for example, the awareness would be all the campaigns that have uh, an awareness objective or just a reach objective. Wouldn't really pay too much attention to the awareness consideration right now or even leads, unfortunately, because leads, for example, take things like um, the um, website actions, for example, the leads take the website actions and use them as leads. So even people that click on, you know, buttons, you know, segmented as leads, which is why I'm saying these aren't really perfect at the moment because it kind of takes a bit from a, a blend of where LinkedIn thinks that they should be pulling sources through but it's not quite representative of, of what these actually mean. Qualified leads, opportunities and close one. I think opportunities and close one are the two most interesting ones at the moment where you can kind of see how many have gone into an opportunity state from a you know deal perspective into HubSpot and then how many have closed and won. The Biggest thing as well is around 180 days it says here, but we know it's only a 90 day. And also we know it only can take the data from when you've actually synced to the data. It can't look back in hindsight. So again, you wanna set it up as soon as possible. Um, but also I'm not quite sure they do 180 days because by like privacy law, it's 90 days. So I'm not quite sure why they did 180 days. I think this might be 180 days. Um, but then this side, I think maybe 90 days, but from the date that you first set it up as well. So make sure you go and include that so you have a really nice overview. They're sort of building this section out so it starts giving you insights, um, which you can go and review based on this data as well. Um, but I hope you guys found that useful. Um, online conversion tracking, definitely place to start from day one. Um, offline conversion tracking, set that up if you can. Um, again, got benefits and limitations to it. And third would be then setting up um, this new data-driven attribution model, just so you can see a very top level overview of how everything's performing all together. Um, but honestly, I'd say the best way to actually go and look at all your data would be in your CRM itself, because there is no timeline. You've got all the ad information, which has been pulled through um, and you can kind of see a lot of information within there itself. But this is kind of the LinkedIn ads, full stop shop, um, full stop shop, LinkedIn ads, full, um, breakdown, I guess, of the different attribution models. But if you really want to get a long-term view and, you know, you want to look at everything else from a multi-channel perspective um, and, you know, all the information you need, that's going to be where your CRM is going to be the golden um, source of truth for everyone else involved. But I hope you found this useful. Any questions, give me a shout. I'll look to create that video um, on HubSpot and um, Zapier. I'll add that as like the last video link up here in the minute. But at the moment, I'd probably say, go and check out our LinkedIn ads um, playlist if you're interested in seeing uh, more information on LinkedIn ads, strategies, setups, whatever it may be. But have a great day, guys, and uh, speak to you very soon.